Hi, I'm Lily, and you're watching the Corvette Channel. Um, when you jack these cars up, you want to make darn sure that you pop the trunk and the hood and uh, both doors. Um, these are unibody design. They do have a frame, but um, they're... If you don't, if you don't do that, you can actually damage the frame. You can actually damage the way the parts open and close. So um, you just want to make sure that you do that. So as you can see here, what Terry's doing here um, is he's pulling the pulling the bolts. He's kind of pulled like every other bolt loose on the pan and this particular pan doesn't have a, uh, a drain plug so what we're going to do is we're actually going to start on this back corner or it should actually be the front edge of the transmission pan if you're looking back at the car so um, we're going to pull the bolts loose on the front side to allow the pan to start to drop down um, so it'll go into his, his, uh, his fluid catcher and then what it'll do is it'll actually allow the pan to kind of start to drain and um, and then that way once we get the majority of the fluid out then we can drop the pan entirely <coughs> now what we're noticing is that what we came up against is that we ran into one bolt that just really isn't accessible uh, just by getting on a socket or a box wrench and so we decided we're going to go ahead and uh, break this exhaust uh, uh, the bracket here for the exhaust loose and then that way we can, uh, we can get to that bolt. Um, once we get that free then the, the pan is fairly Much fairly is loose now at this point. Um, and then we'll start to allow it to drain. The one thing that I want to point out to you guys is this fluid is extremely hot. If I drove this up uh, about, an, uh, about 80 miles up, up here. Terry's house and so uh, you know we pulled it right in on the lift and so this transmission fluid is really hot so you just want to want to warn you that you know you might want to let this thing it's going to make for good draining it's going to drain out really good but it's uh, it also makes it hot and it can burn you so you want to be very careful so if you can let it sit for a while that's what I would recommend doing. Hey guys uh, Terry just mentioned there also that you know you're going to get some you're going to get some of the drainage coming from the torque converter itself. Um, when you take them into a shop and you have these things totally flushed, they can get the majority of the fluid out of the torque converter also, and so they're changing it. But all I'm doing today is I'm just doing a, a drain and fill. So basically the, the fluid that's in the pan here is what's going to be changed out. Um, there's a few different theories on this, and um, you know, um, I honestly don't know what's true and what's not. Urban legend, maybe I'm not sure, but they they've said that in the past that um, that if you change the fluid in the torque converter, you're almost on a on a high mileage transmission. You're almost sure to to uh, you know take it out. Um, so I've kind of followed that throughout all all the work I've ever done. That I just change the fluid, change the fluid in the filter, and what fluid is still in the torque converter, which you can't get it all out anyhow, but um, what's there, I leave there, and then it can mix with the new fluid. And with the amount of new fluid with, versus what's in the torque converter, you're not really, you're not really losing too much quality. But um, I'd rather be safe than sorry than to, uh, to try to force that fluid out and then end up ruining the transmission. Okay, why don't uh, you hold? I want to set this under just to keep the dripping. So now all we're doing here is we're just letting it kind of do the drip dry uh, thing and in the process we're going to try to clean up our our mess. I shouldn't, shouldn't say it's Terry's mess, it's my mess. <laughs> like he just informed me just before I turned the camera back on. Uh, that's what the floor is for, but I get to clean it. <laughs> <laughs> You want to get the edges of where the gasket goes on when you go to put this back together that are as grease or oil free as possible. So we're going to we're going to pull this. Yeah, I'm just kind. Of, you get most of the stuff off. And it makes less of a mess. Just kind of. 
wipe the excess because this is all going to get filled up again so it's not really necessary but just for cleaning purposes it works now. so we bought or I went to I went to AutoZone yesterday and as you can see here I think in the here in my my box um, let's see here if I can turn my camera so I can tell that I'm showing you something. So we went here, went to AutoZone and I was able to get a the Duralast set up here. It comes with a new filter and it comes with a new gasket. Okay, so we're going to, we'll go ahead and we'll take the old gasket off the pan. We'll take this filter out and then we'll put this filter on. Now if you notice here, this one comes with a brand new O-ring. If you can see that orange O-ring, um, I'll show it to you here. Let me put the box down. So, if you can see that, there's the O-ring. That's really the only thing that's holding this filter into the transmission. So, um, when you go to take the old filter out, you're going to want to make sure that you kind of wiggle it out ever so careful so that way you do get the original o-ring out of there because if you try to put another one up in there it's going to get stuck up into the transmission and it's going to cause you enough of so let's see if we can do that But then Scott's cleaning up. So. I know, so I'm cleaning it up. So. Okay, so the, the O ring it didn't, didn't, it didn't, come, it off. didn't come out. We can get it out. Yep. So, so um, we'll have to, have to use a little, a little uh, hook or something like that to get it out. So the, you'll be able to see there's the O ring is like right at the edge there. Terry's only going up just a very little up there to get it out, and it's just, they just get dry and brittle. So you just want to make sure that you're aware of that beforehand. <laughs> but that's what it is. Okay, hold it up just a hair higher. There we go. So it's, little, it's the same O-ring that is on the filter, the new filter. And it's just, I used a small screwdriver, just worked it out really easy so you don't score anything, and they'll pop right out. So Terry's wiping the uh, the pan off. He's taken it. We took it outside and, and drained out the fluid out of it, and um, he's just wiping wiping it all down. And then um, he did a preliminary wipe out of the inside of the of it, but it's still got all the residue that we need to wipe out of it. Um, so uh, that'll be the next step. Now what he's doing here is he's just going to double check. Uh, to make sure that the gasket fits over this one in the well, same place. Well, I don't place. really want to touch it because of the oil and stuff on it, but it does look like it's be fine. Okay. There you go. Well, here he's removing the, the old gasket. Which is probably going to come off in pieces. Yeah. And it's old and brittle, and it's, like you said, it's just going to come off in pieces. Now, one thing here, we I got lucky on this one that there wasn't a lot of residue in there. We, we did this outside and did it off camera. Um, but you can see there's a little magnetic square there uh, inside the uh, inside the pan. And normally you'll have a lot of, uh, hopefully not a lot, but you'll have some sort of debris that's stuck to little metal shavings, things like that, um, that will be stuck to this little this little magnet right here. Um, so it's just really small stuff. It's not a big deal. If you're starting to see big chunks of something, then it'd be something you want to worry about. And you can see how brittle these get. Yeah, yeah. So um, this one here, we're getting pretty lucky. Sometimes it leaves residue with just a little bit, but that's not bad.
And now Terry's done this a whole bunch of times in his life. This is uh, this is his forte and this stuff. So he's going pretty fast with it, <laughs> and so he's going faster than I can actually film it, which is which is good. But um, you can see he's just he's making no work of it at all here. Um, well, it's nice to have this kind of a tool. It's a gasket remover. You see me going like that. It actually yep. makes it a lot easier to get a lot of it out. Yep. And this magnet thing, you can rub and rub and rub. Yeah, and, and it'll always it, have something on it, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you try to get it as clean as you can because everything that's on there sometimes is metallic and you don't want it going up in there and running around inside the transmission in little metallic pieces. That's what that magnet's for. This here, I want to take a wire brush to. Okay. Let's see what he's talking about here. Is a little bit of debris that it uh, came off uh, off of the gasket, the original gasket. So he wants to get that off, or it looks like the, or it look like the rest, you know, of the whole pan there. Most of this is not on the lip, but I still just want to clean it off. Just take one of these gasket scrapers, removers, whatever you might want to call it, and there's little residue of the gasket that gets on here. And if you can take it and get most of it off so that the raised, there's a raised surface. That raised surface is what you want really clean. Scar in the metal. It's just a, it's a wear mark from the filter. From the filter ah. when it's going, it'll shake. Mm -hmm. Okay, so Terry's going to put a little bit of grease on the pan here, just enough. And the only reason he's doing this is it's to be able to hold the the filter in place, um, so it's not going to move on you um, when you re when you're reassembling it. So it's just gonna act as a kind of uh, an adhesive kind of to hold it on, but you don't wanna use any adhesives and you don't wanna use any sealants of sorts. You're just using this just to be able to keep the filter in place, or not the filter, I keep saying filter, but the, uh, the gasket itself. Wanna push that down with your finger? Just pull it there you go. they fold these up yeah it was all it was all wadded up in the box yeah, yeah. yeah. we're just going to take our all of our bolts that we the pan bolts and we're just going to be cleaning those off and getting getting everything nice and clean we don't want to have anything dirty getting going back into the uh, into the transmission or anywhere near it so as you can see he's just cleaning the bolts off we're just using Using degreaser, you can use um, you know brake cleaner, anything. Like yeah, anything that's got the cleaning stuff that you you know you get from AutoZone or any of the parts stores. I like using brake clean on this stuff because it cleans them. These here you have to wipe down or, or rinse off or something. Brake clean kinds of cleans up stuff a lot easier. You just don't want to get none of that stuff inside the transmission or anything you kind of work on because it does break things down. You really don't have to do this this much as we're doing. That's just the way I am. <laughs> okay. 
It's almost like it's trying to push itself back down. Wait, it, it does. And we'll see if it might have to be kind of just knocked up in there. Do it very gently, put it back up in there. And now, no, 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 watch out, watch out. Yep. There we go. There you go. Okay. Okay. They don't just slide up in there then. So if you guys saw that, we were trying to get this thing to slide up there and it just didn't want to go. It was like just a little bit bigger, which is fine. That makes it a good, nice, tight fit. But it wasn't wanting to, and you could tell when we went to go put the the, uh, the the pan on, it just wasn't fitting. So Terry just used a little rubber mallet, banged it up in there, and it just popped right in. Not a problem. So... Before we put it up on the transmission, we're just starting the bolt, then going through the pan, through the gasket, just enough to start it um, so the gasket will stay in place. And that'll make it a lot easier for you when you go to put it up in there. You're not, you know, the, the gasket will be right where you need it to be. But it's not, not a bad thing. So here's a close-up of what we're doing here. You can see that we've just got, we just started each one of the bolts just through the gasket. Just enough that it's holding it in place so we don't have to fight it. The grease, it kind of held it, but it kept wanting to slide and so it was just, figured it was just much easier to do it this way. Okay. You want to go around and just kind of get them all even. And then once you get them kind of even, then you want to run some type of a pattern so that you're not tightening up one area where you make a bow in it kind of thing. Pull it up. Right, so you're going to kind of tighten it kind of like you do a, the, uh, just like, like a when you're doing a lug nut. Yeah. Same, same idea. Right. And um, according to spec, it shows that it's nine foot pounds. Okay. So you want to torque these bolts, the nine foot pounds. I mean, and I don't want to cross that bolt. There we go. Oop. Come on now. Try it a little bit more. I can't get the wrench on. There you go. This one I didn't have enough leverage there. There, okay, we're good with that. Okay. Now, let me get my... So if you remember from the beginning, we had one bolt that was in the way because of the exhaust bracket. That's what I was actually prying the exhaust over so we could get we could get that bolt started again. So, and everything's pretty well put back together. So he's just going to torque these bolts up. And then at that point, we can drop the, drop the car and... Uh, and fill it full of transmission fluid and we'll be done. Okay, so Terry's tightening these these bolts up and he's gonna put nine foot pounds of torque on them. Once they get all yeah. kind of easy. He's still going around and getting them snug, but that's well, now I'll start a pattern of tightening them at nine. What 
I'm doing is every other bolt, then I'll come around and do the other one. When I get done with that, I'll go over, I'll go over them a couple times just to make sure that I didn't miss one. Right. And as you take pressure off, as you're tightening one, it can loosen the pressure on another one. So it's going to go back around a couple of times. Okay, they're all at nine now. Okay. So at that point, we're just gonna wipe everything off and get the, get the floor cleaned up down below here before we lower the, the car. And then we'll go up to the top side and we will we'll fill the transmission back up and we should be good to go. Okay, so now we've got, got the uh, car on the ground. Um, the specs show that with a drain and fill, uh, this happens to be a 92 Corvette, and this might change depending on which, uh, which model you have, which transmission. Um, so that you want to make darn sure you, you have that right. This one, it's saying that it's, uh, if you replace the filter and you just drain the fluid, that it takes 4.7 quarts uh, to fill it. So what we're going to do is we're just going to fill it with four quarts, which is the one big green bottle over there, just one gallon. We're going to do that first, and then uh, then we can tap it off from there. Um, we'll, after we get that in, we'll start it, and then uh, let the fluid get warm, and then we'll be able to lift the lift the car back up. Just double check it for for leaking. Make sure we've got the everything in there good and that we're not going to lose a bunch of fluid going down the road. So we're going to let that sit for a couple minutes and then we'll fire the car up, um, let it get warm, and then uh, we'll be able to check it, uh, check it for the uh, um, to get the, the the amount in there exactly the way it's supposed to be, get it topped off, and uh, make sure that we don't have any leaks down below. So what, what we've done is we've gone ahead and we've we had raised it up, we checked to make sure we didn't have any leaks, and then we went ahead and dropped the dropped it back down on the ground, and then we've moved uh, we've cleared everything out. The it's free from the lift. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and um, start the car and let it run for a little bit to get warm, and then uh, then we'll be able to uh, top off the fluid. Okay, so. We let the engine run for a little while, and we checked the dipstick, and it's uh, still showing about a quart low. The engine's not totally fully warm yet, but we're going to go ahead and we're going to add one more quart, and then we're because it's below the fill line. And then, uh, then we'll after we put this quart in, then we'll let it come up to uh, complete full temperature. It's at about 190 degrees right now, um, but. Uh, get it a little bit closer and then we can tap it off as it gets totally full. So after it got warmed up here, Terry checked it again and he had put about just a little bit over uh, three quarters of that, of that uh, the fifth quart, which ends up being pretty close to the 4.7. So what we're going to do is I've got quite a bit of drive home, so once um, once I get home, I'll double check it, make sure that it's tapped off, you know, exactly. Temperature will be up to full temp, and, um, and we should be good to go. So that is pretty much it. Hopefully, uh, 
hopefully we were able to film this for you and uh, give you a better understanding of what's involved. watching the Corvette channel. Don't forget to hit like on the video and make sure you subscribe.